started last year at Tucko High School, and this will be our third panel that we're having. So I want to thank the PTA for all their help and support, Building Level Administration, Mr. DeBellis and Dr. Lenahan, of course, Dr. Goodman, our superintendent, our central office staff, Chris Keogh, who's behind the scenes tonight. We really appreciate that. And also um, our Board of Education. Um, our PTA does many, many different projects throughout the year in, in Tucko, and this is just one of the special um, pieces that we're going to be doing together. I want to thank Jennifer Snyder and Beth Ann Silvestri. They're going to be my co-host this evening and answering questions. I'm Paul Tobin, the assistant principal for student services and athletics at Tuckaho. Very proud to be there. Um, so I'll be monitoring um, just, you know, the, the behind the scenes with Chris tonight and be a co-host. And then uh, we're going to get started. We have some very special people joining us this evening, and they're going to start off by introducing uh, themselves after Miss Snyder and Miss Silvestri say hello. We have Carol Lolly, Tom hello. Tobin, Carol, mm -hmm. Tom Tobin, my brother, uh, Dina Morgan, John Hi. Handel, and mm -hmm. Scooter Scott is with us also. Thank Hi, you everybody. all. Yeah, you guys can say hello and welcome, welcome aboard. Okay, uh, Jen, I really appreciate your help tonight and support. So um, if you want to start off, and then we'll go to Beth Ann and. We can start with the questions, and I'm going to see if any questions show, show up in the chat, and we can pose some of them as well towards the end. Uh, we have about an hour, so we're going to get started. Once again, thank you, everybody. I want our students to enjoy it and have a good time tonight and look at some other options uh, professionally as well as with, with their education uh, for the future. So we thank our student body and our parents alike. Okay, Jen, take it away. Okay, thanks everyone for coming, and we're just going to go around and take turns answering the questions. and. If we, when we start out, just introduce yourself. I know he gave everyone's names, but just so the kids can put a name with a face and what your job is that you're doing. So the first question we just want you to do, besides letting us know what your job is, then just let us know what is the educational process or the training that you have to go through to get that type of job that you do. So maybe we'll start with Dina, you could start. Hi everybody, I'm Dina Morgan. Um, I'm a court reporter and the educational process for court reporting is you can there you can go to a business school and get a two year degree in court reporting. I mean, it, it could take longer. It could take you a little shorter time or you can go to a four year college. There's a four year college upstate that you can go to. You can you can come out with a bachelor's degree and also have get a degree in court reporting. Um, it's a certificate that you get where you have to pass a course and take numerous tests on speed and on it's all, all on a special machine. And so you can do it either way, two year, four year, or however long it takes you to, to get through the course. Thank you. Is that, is that Dina, is that like a specialized program that's just straight for court reporting? Like that's what the- Yeah, it's a straight court reporting program. It's a trade. Um, you have a, a machine, it's a specialized machine. It's not shorthand, it's almost like a different language and you take it down on another, on a machine and you learned, you learn basically a different language and you put it down on the machine, you take it down on the machine and then you, you're going, your courses are English, you're taking courses, um, punctuation, grammar and building up speed, just constantly building up speed, listening to people speak and taking down everything on that machine. Okay, thank you, Dina. Um, sure. Maybe Tom, if you could give us just a little thing about what you do and what's the training that you need to go to or certification or anything like that for that job. Sure, hi everybody, my name is Thomas Tobin. Uh, I'm a local union number three, IBEW, stands for International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. And I am a general foreman with them and we serve the five boroughs of Manhattan. And uh, the training for that is a national electrical apprentice program that you could start right out of high school at 18 years old. And um, you, you, it's a four year program um, by the IBEW. And there's also, um, there's an associate's degree uh, connected to that with Empire State College, which is a two year associate's degree. Um, and, and it's a course in labor studies. So um, when you're done with your apprenticeship and your, your college, you're pretty well educated um, for the field. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Tom. And John, if you can give us a little overview and what's the training for your career? I'm a general contractor. Uh, carpentry is 
basically I'm a, I'm a, I'm like a master carpenter. Um, I mean, you could go to trade schools, but I, I chose the, the more traditional route of being an apprentice first and, you know, starting at the bottom, working my way up, learning from the masters, you know, third generation carpenters and, uh, you know, just on the job, hands on. It's pretty much how I learned, but, you know, I, I would suggest for, for anybody to, to uh, probably go to a trade school first. You, know, they had to, uh, you could go to a trade school as you're working as well. And uh, that's pretty much it. You know, I mean, I just started my, from the bottom and worked my way up. Is that just, something you started after high school or during high school started working as an apprentice? Uh, after. After? Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, how about you, Carol? Hi, I'm Carol Lolly. I'm a hairdresser in White Plains. So the process to become a hairstylist or a colorist or both, you just have to go nine months of beauty school. You could go full time or you could extend it and go 10 months more of a part time thing, 12 months and have a job on the side. Or you could just go straight through and then you would start working in a salon and that's how you build your clientele. And, you know, you put in hard work as you are an assistant in a hair salon, but you just take in everything you can get. And one day you can possibly own your own salon. And um, I think it's also a great career for men or women because you kind of get to make your own hours. You don't have to necessarily work full time. You could work part time and have a family. You know, I, I honestly always say you got to do what you love because when you do what you love, that's how you become successful. I agree. Okay, thanks, Carol. Um, Scooter, can you give us a little background and what kind of training or whatever goes into your career? Sure. Uh, kind of like Tom, I'm uh, IATC, local number one. Stands for the International Alliance of Theater <clears throat> and my inter inter International Alliance. Uh, I, 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 International Alliance. Normally, I say it runs right off my tongue. I'm the shop steward. All the guys in my place would be cracking up. International <laughs> Alliance of Theater and Stage Employees. And it is a very old union, started, I believe, in 1890. But I got into it kind of like uh, John. I, I did came through the School of Hard Knocks. Now, you can go and take courses in theater. SUNY Purchase has a fantastic theater course. Uh, they have one of the best. As a matter of fact, my union did a loadout at SUNY Purchase about two weeks ago. Um, so they kind of work with us. We have our guys going up there to give classes and so that is something you can do if you want, if theater is a great love of yours and you really want to dive deep into the minutia of, of stagecraft from carpentry to electrician to uh, audio engineering, audio engineering, which is my specialty, set design, scenic painting. There's all of that. And uh, there's also, I'm IOC local number one. We deal with Broadway, Madison Square Garden, Radio City, Carnegie Hall, which is where I work, uh, Jazz at Lincoln Center, um, City Center, most of the big theaters in, in Manhattan and surrounding boroughs. But we also have affiliations with Local 4 in Brooklyn, Local 52, which works out throughout Westchester. If you see film shoots going on, that's Local 52. And it's all related as far as the skill sets, but each union has its own area of, of specialization, either through geography, like Local 4 in Brooklyn, where they do the exact same work that Local 1 does, but in Brooklyn and Queens, or IOTC 52, which specializes in motion picture and television. Though, having said that, Local 1 handles all of the TV studios in Manhattan, all the soap operas, The View, stuff like that. We, we still do a lot of that. Um, so we also have an apprentice program and you can also test and it, but there are three ways to get membership. One is to be in the right place at the right time, which is how I got my card. I was working in a space that organized and that's how I got my card. Uh, the other is to have friends in the business who get you work. And if you make what we call our minimums, 
that makes you eligible to then go through certain classes and, and a certain amount of training and you get your card or then, and this is really the most desirable way is really to go through the apprentice program because uh, you know, you, you learn from a lot of great people. It, it, you're, you're making money all, all the while it, versus if people are just, you're getting work through, through, references from friends because you're not a union member uh there has to be a shortage of union stagehands in order for that work to become available for you if you're an apprentice well you're in and it, it's a great thing it really is it's it's a fun career um it, it could it a lot of long hours it is not for everybody uh but it's if you are a hands-on type person if you were inclined to doing stuff uh, on your own time that that it, it's it's a great it, it can be a, a really great and rewarding career thank you scooter and scooter you you gave a lot of different things that you can do in that career but you're specifically in sound engineering i i specialize in audio engineering but it, as a stage hand you have to be able to do it all i can do lighting i can do carpentry i can do set I, as a matter of fact when i work with uh local 52 i i am a prop guy i'm um what is called a set dresser so if you watch a TV show and you're looking at tables and plates and, and, and everything set up in the room, all those books on the shelves, the, that's that's set dressing. That's kind of like my vacation from doing audio. <laughs> and do you do se separate apprenticeships for each of those different types of? No, 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 I, you could, you could. But uh, if because of, you know, I've been doing this now on for 40 years what you can do for local 52 say i wanted to become a member there as well and i have, i have friends who are members in both unions local one and local 52 you can just test now that's if you are already a union member but there is indeed an, an apprenticeship program it for each of those unions for local 52 for local one and local 52 just they have periods just like every union really where the testing opens up for a year or whatever and then it shuts down for a few years because there's a limited amount of work you don't want to have too many people not being able to make a living so it's it's kind of like as guys go out of the union well then there's a need and and it works out very well okay great thank you guys so much so the next question i have is i know that there was various training you all needed to get into your career but the kids that you're speaking to now are all in high school so they're probably interested in what's the most important academic course like is math more important science english what that would you say like not necessarily that you needed to go to school for that but just looking back see which high school course do you think contributes most to what you actually do in your job right now sorry i'll start with john uh, definitely math being yeah, you have, you have angles and you know you have to use a tape measure all day long you know yeah you, you need math without it you carpentry you wouldn't be able to build a house <laughs> you know definitely yeah um what about you carol oh gosh i'm gonna have to say math and science and art i guess all in one because when you're mixing colors i guess you got to know a little bit of science Mm -hmm. And math is always good in any profession, I think, especially when you're handling money and what an inch to you is maybe an inch to somebody else. And <laughs> art, I feel like I feel like in any with any hairdresser, there's either the creative hairdressers or the more technical hairdressers. So you got to kind of find what your niche is. You can learn it or you can just create it in your mind. So either one is fine. And when you do the training for like, is it different kind of training for a colorist versus hair cutting? Like, is it one program teach you a little of both or do you choose which so one? When you, you get, when you get your license, you're, you're under the cosmetology umbrella. So, and then when you train in a salon, that's when you really learn if you're more of a colorist or um, a hairstylist, or you can be both. Some people specialize and they do one or the other. Okay. So you really have the choice to do either. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. There's, there's so many options, so many options. Okay, um, what about you, Tom? What high school course do you think is helpful in your career? Uh, the most helpful, like John said, is math because um, our apprenticeship program has a lot of math from day one. 
And as everybody knows in math, and I learned in high school as well, if you fall behind, they kind of steamroll you. So you got to pay attention to formulas and constants. And, you know, if you don't understand it, um, you know, the professor, you could see him after school. There's no, you know, there's no rush. Um, you know, they'll make, they'll try to make sure that you get it because it's very important. Math also, writing for the college courses, English. And now um, computer skills are coming in very, very handy. You know, a lot of computer work is being done in the field. So um, there's a lot of different avenues you could take in the electrical industry. And uh, later on, I'll get into them, but a lot of math, a ton of math. Okay. Thanks. What about you, Scooter? Uh, I got to go with Tom. I, I work with the, uh, the IB brothers down at the garden when I'm down there. And uh... I was forming there, Scooter. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm the yeah, yeah, yeah. You, and you got Adam. You know, it, it's a, yeah. So math, but uh, you know, especially okay because I do audio. Music, of course, is going to be a big help. Um, you want to at least, especially when say you're if you're doing light, if you're a lighting designer or an audio engineer, you need to be able to communicate effectively with the client. So English can be very helpful. Uh, the more precise you can be with your language, the more descriptive you can be, the better you are able to kind of get inside a client's head if, you, if you're working with them in that respect. But math, um, shop, you know, like if, if you know, I, I mean, when we were all growing up, we all had shop in school. Those, those kinds of technical uh, gifts and, and practices are really important. And if, if you've got access to them, make use of them and, 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 if you want to do this for a living, immerse yourself in those things. But more than anything, get that math down. Because as I have progressed, and it was funny, I was algebra was always a pain in the butt for me. And that's probably the biggest thing that you use the most in electrics. Geometry, I was great. And it's like, okay, so I can, when I'm doing a speaker design, I can get the angle parts of it right. But that algebraic stuff, it, that I'm working on now, if I stuck with it as a kid, would really make my life much easier. <laughs> Thanks, Scooter. I feel like we're getting a lot of math all across the board from yeah, everyone. Yeah, what, what about you, Dina? What do you think was the most important course? I think no, I know what you're going to say, but we'll see. No math here. English. I wish I paid more attention in English. Um, I learn a new word every day in, in, in this job. There, the terminology, uh, especially there's a lot of legal terminology, but if you're taking medical, there's medical terminology. Um, most importantly is punctuation because after I get home, after I take a job, I go back, I have to come home. Half, half of my job is done at home and I'm home editing. And the more you know about how to edit, how to, how to add punctuation, where commas are needed and things like that, that's, it makes it so much easier, so much quicker that I still go back and look up things. 30 years later, I'm still looking up different. Is this the right way to punctuate this? Is this the right way to punctuate this? Um, and like I said, and also grammar. Grammar is so important because you hear different people speak every day. It could be a medical deposition. It could be a legal deposition. There's so many, so much different terminology that comes up and different words, different people use different words every day. So I How would does that work with, like when you're hearing different things like medical term, like if you don't know the word, if you've never heard this medical term or something, how do you know what to write? You have to take, you take it down phonetically. Oh, okay. Yeah, you take everything down phonetically. And then nowadays, thank God for Google, because <laughs> you Google the word and you see if it pops up. Years ago, it wasn't like that. You didn't you didn't have that. I had like dictionaries, piles of, you know, all different dictionaries, medical dictionary, legal dictionary. That was how we worked back then. And, um, and now really you can do computers is, a, is another, like we didn't have that when I was in high school. It was many years ago. Um, but computers is also really good to know because that all that connects, everything connects because as you go into this field, it's, it's a lot more than just taking things down now, you know, there's, there's a lot more to it. You can do, there's so many different ways you can go with this field. So I would definitely say English, English computer. I thought you'd say English, but okay. 
So then, yeah, you know, I forgot to mention computers. Um, use them a lot as far as stage plots and things like that. So yeah, well, yeah what I'm happened sure in everyone's career now? I'm sure that's coming in. But so some scooter touched on something before about being important to communicate with your the people you're working with, and I would think all of your careers that's an important trait to have. I'm sure, Carol. I've been in the hairdresser salon. Like it's very important to communicate well, but. What yes. traits do you think are important for a person to have? Like if a kid is thinking of, oh, is this a career for me? Like what kind of traits, like a good communicator, what other kind of traits do you think are important to do well in your career? Um, we'll do Carol. So, and you have to be a people person. You have to love people. You have to like working with the public because you're going to be not only working in a salon, you have to get along with your coworkers, but your clients too. So you have to be compassionate. You have to be um, able to be on, you know, there's always clients that come with a story. So you have to be able to communicate well with them, feel sympathy. You have to be friendly. You have to be approachable. And I think that in, if you're going to be any in the hair industry, you have to, you have to be nice, <laughs> really. Um, because that's how you build your clientele. Okay, thank you, Carol. What about you, John? What do you think are important traits for a contractor? I would say number one is attention to detail. You have to pay, you have to, and patience with the customers because it's their, their home you're in and you, you know, you have to uh, listen to what they're saying and take everything into consideration and be patient with them, but definitely attention to detail. In my opinion, so there's a lot of people out there that uh, try to go in and out really quickly and do bad work. And uh, yeah, I, 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 and cleanliness, neatness, things like that. And uh, you, you have to be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I, you just have to be very patient with people, you know? And, uh, uh, I mean, yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think also like uh, some kind of organizational skills I think you need as a contractor because yeah. you've got a lot of different things going on in a job that's at true. once yeah. and prioritizing and organizing. So um, what about you, Scooter? I got I to gotta go with John. Patience, uh, ability to really work well with other people, especially when you're tired because as uh, Tom will tell you, we work long hours, 12, 18 24 hours straight sometimes. So you've got to be able to um, <clears throat> stay focused, be meticulous, bring a certain sense of, uh, I always like to say, I like to sign my name to everything that I do because that brings a level of, of, of uh, investment and professionalism so that it, it, it's kind of like your calling card because you get work based on the quality of the work that you do. Guys are going to call you back because you're a good worker and because, you know, you were the guy who didn't leave that mess of cables in the corner. You were the guy who came in and cleaned it up. That kind of conscientiousness, that kind of, of um, pride in, in the work that you do. Uh, labor unions are great organizations in that, when when you have a good one, the culture that they create it is something that inspires its members to ed continue to educate themselves, which is why I'm dealing with the math. So keep up with the math, kids. Um, <laughs> but it inspires you to continue to improve in your craft and, and, and to work at the highest level, even when you don't feel like it, when you're tired, because, you know, at the end of the day, it's not just you. It's the work that you do represents the, the, the organization you're working for, the group of people that you're working with, and, and that kind of, of, of um, conscientiousness is really important. Scooter, what about you, Dina? What do you think are important traits for a court reporter? Definitely organizational skills. There's a lot that goes into court reporting where you have to keep things organized. Years ago, we used to have to keep the notes for 10 years. So, and it wasn't on the computer then. So it was all stacks of, of, the, of the court reporting, the machine, the papers. So I had to make sure everything was filed and kept because if there was a court case and they, you had to go back to it, 
you had to go back to all, all those notes and everything was paper notes. So it taught me to be very organized, but also you have to, you have to be alert <laughs> because you have to be able to pay attention because you have to listen to everything that everybody's saying in that. And cause you're taking down everything that's being said verbatim. So you can't miss a word. You can't miss what anybody says. So everything's being taken down verbatim. So you need to be able to pay attention. And sometimes you do get used to drifting off sometimes, but still being able to do your job, but you really need to be able to be alert and pay attention to details and things like that. Okay, thanks, Dina. Um, what if, last, Tom, what about you? What kind of traits are important for an electrician? Okay, so first of all, um, as an apprentice, the number one most important thing is you have to be on time. You gotta learn punctuality and you gotta be there every day and you have to be willing to learn and you have to be a hard worker and you gotta be a team player. I mean, but if you're, if, and then listen, if some people, um, they're more like to be on their own, there's a spot for them too. You don't have to be sociable if you don't wanna be, as long as you're a, a hard worker, you're fine. So that's pretty much the key. And I agree with Scooter 100%. Um, you know, um, uh, as far as the electrical industry is concerned, um, you know, in, in, in my business, they, they say it takes your family from the cradle to the grave. I could talk for hours about this, about organized labor. I mean, I was so fortunate and blessed and opportunity is there. Like co college isn't for everybody. It wasn't for me. It's not for everybody. It's not for some of my kids. It is for some. I have eight kids and it's not for some of them. It is for some of them. And uh, same with my family. But um, if you're not going to go to college, get into a trade, even John the Carpenter is, is a great way to go. You could be your own boss. You could call the shots. You can call your own hours. If you want to uh, play it safe, you get into the union and, um, and and you work hard and you work your way up. I was fortunate enough to be a foreman in Madison Square Garden. It was the greatest job I ever had in my life. We then, and uh, Scooter will tell you, we do boxing matches, HBO. If you love sports, we do basketball. It's the, it's the busiest place in the world. And if you like sports, it's an amazing place to work. And, and uh, it's the greatest job in the world. And you can get involved in that. I did the U.S. Open for many, many years, tennis. I did the uh, convention center, doing shows and all that. Um, it's a wonderful industry. They have now CAD. With, I was talking about the computer. They have CAD 3D. You can get involved with it's uh, 3D drawings that show you exactly where to put all your pipes. And it's blown up in 3D, so you can't miss it. And you can't mess it up in the field. It's, it's wide open. They're getting into solar now. They're going out in the ocean. And they're getting involved in these solar panels on the ocean. There's plenty of work coming up. So it's a great field. Uh, if you're not going to go to college, and you know, um, the, the, you know, if money's your thing, you, you could be a millionaire either way. Going to college, not going to college, you can make it if you're willing to work hard, I believe. And you and you gotta you gotta want to work hard, otherwise it'll never work out. Tommy yeah. and Scooter, do do you, the unions pay for your educational classes for the courses? You yeah, pay for right. it's like you you put the money up front. You pass the course, you get reimbursed. Wow. It's great. It's great. You can't, you can't do any better than that. Ours is they pay for everything, but if you fail, you lose 60000 because you don't move up to the next level. Ooh. So, of course, 60000 to fail, of course. So, people wow. trying to... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. So, my... Cohort over here, Beth Ann is going to ask you guys the next couple of questions. She, her camera is not working, so you'll just have to listen. Thanks, Jen. I'm going to start with Dina. Dina, can you provide examples of the different paths one can take in your profession? Yes. Yeah, so there's a few different paths you could do in court reporting, and now it's it's becoming even more broad. So you can. The, the traditional way to go is you be, you pass your tests and you can you take a test to become a court reporter in say Supreme Court in White Plains or you know Supreme Court anywhere federal court Supreme Court local courts um, and that I mean that's a very it's very lucrative that's that's a great way to go because you're a state employee you're in a pension system um, not only I think right now starting salary in New York state to become a court reporter is like 78,000 and that, and then you get like a $5,000 signing bonus. And then that doesn't even, then you sell your transcripts after that. You could sell your transcripts. You sell them to the, like say the defendant's attorneys, the different attorneys you sell your transcripts to. 
and say you're on a big case, you know, that all, that the movies want, then you could sell your transcripts to the movie theaters and things like that, they, um, the producers. And then the other ways you can go is what I do, I freelance. So I do depositions, I go to court courthouses, um, different lawyers' offices. Um, so the, for the past 22 years, I've been working doing the building department in East Chester. I do all their, their transcription work for the zoning board, planning board, architectural review board hearings. So they have night hearings and I do all that work. And all that work is, um, a lot of it's from home, which allowed me the opportunity to be home with my kids, which is what I wanted. Um, and then before that, I had gone out. I did different lawyers' offices, things like that. Now, the biggest thing that they're doing now is closed captioning. So when you see on TV, when you get the closed captioning on TV, those are all court reporters, and they're all taking down what people are saying with the TV, you know, the commercials, the all, you know, all the different shows on TV. So for the hearing impaired, um, that's all court reporters doing that work. And you could take, you take all your work home, you transcribe it, and it puts all the closed captioning in there. And that's a big, big field to go into now. And again, very lucrative. You could start out making 100,000 easy in that field. So there's all different ways to go. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you. Carol, how about you? Okay, so you can, you first you have to pass your two tests, which is this, you have to take um, a written test and then you have to take a New York State board test, which is you have to actually show them how you do hair. But then you would, you can either be a hairstylist, you could be a hair colorist, you can be both. You can be a salon owner. You can be an educator in colors, like say L'Oreal is a huge color company. You can be a representative for L'Oreal. You could be an educator for L'Oreal and travel all over the world and teach people how to use their products. And this goes for any color line. You can also style hair for um, the stars on TV and just have a contract with those people. You can be, you can freelance. So you can just do it at people's houses and have your own schedule. Or you can be just a wedding hairstylist or a special occasion stylist. There's so many roads that you can go down doing hair. And I, I think that it's a great career because it's everybody's always going to need somebody to do their hair. I don't think they're going to come with the, um, out with a robot that does hair anytime <laughs> soon. So great point. I love it. Yeah. Great yeah. Point. <laughs> I hope John, not. I know. I know. John, how about you? Can you provide examples of the different paths one can take in your profession? Well, there's many styles of carpentry one could go into. You could build movie sets. You could do custom cabinetry work. You could be a rough framer. You could do flooring. I mean, there's, there's a lot. It depends on the personality you have and actually how hard you want to work. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, there's heavy work and there's light work. But uh, I, I kind of like... Uh, I like the, the more tedious, intricate things like uh, like custom cabinetry and things like that. But um, I mean, if you become any kind of uh, construction worker, I mean, there's so many different, you don't have to be a carpenter, you could be a, a sheet rocker, a taper, a painter. There's a lot of different avenues you could go down and uh, you know, you could definitely, um, there's, there's a lot of different things you could do and uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's an electrician too. I mean, uh, there's just so many things you could try. It's yes. not just it's not just one you know one thing. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Sounds like it's dependent on your personality, what you exactly. you know, how much or how little you want to do, what your interests are. Yeah, very cool, um, Mister. Uh, the second Mister Tobin. <laughs> um, uh. Yeah, so with us, um, you could. There's so many avenues that you could get involved in. Get, am I on? Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. yeah, yeah we, thank you. Yep. Okay. I, I didn't see anybody. Now I see you, Paul. Okay, there you so, go. So, <laughs> there's so many areas to get involved in. You could get involved. And, and by the way, um, it's not just for men. We have a ton of women now, and we're looking for women. So, women out there, I mean, you can get involved in fiber optic work 
data work, security, um, fire alarm. If, and if you, don't, if you don't want to get dirty and you just want to wear a suit all day, you could become a project manager. And, and, and if you have managerial skills, you could become a project manager, earn great money, and you walk around with a suit all day, go from job to job, checking on jobs. You could become an estimator, electrical estimator. They make great money. You work in the office with the owner every day. You go to, you know, it's a, it's a regular office job. If you like that, there's so many different venues you could take in, in our industry. You could become a high voltage splicer. You could specialize in stuff. You can make um, great money and never be unemployed if you specialize in a trade and, 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 and you know what you're doing. You'll, 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 um, you'll always be employed. There's always work. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Thank you. Scooter, you touched on it, it a bit already, but um, if you could yep. also describe. Sure. Um, well, because I did touch on it, uh, I'm going to use it this opportunity to get a little bit more granular talking about uh, trying to tie it into you, what your interests are. Say, say you love art. Okay. We have scenics who paint all the backgrounds, even though a lot of that kind of stuff is moving to LED walls. There's still a lot of set painting and artistic work that needs to be done. If you're a musician like I am, you can get into audio engineering. Uh, uh, people, again, artistically inclined. Lighting design allows you to be a hair colorist, so to speak, of a set, you know, of a show. You're, you're coloring the people. You're coloring the items. Um, if you, you know, if you like carpentry, well, it carpentry rules on Broadway. So there are so many avenues of interest that young people find themselves involved in that touch or can lead directly to a, 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 a really nice career, a lucrative career, a rewarding career, an enjoyable career in theater. Uh, you know, I mean, there's also camera work, though that's not really the purview of my union. A lot of people go from, say, working, running lights and, and doing, doing grip work in Local 52 to making associations with the cameraman and moving from one end of the of a movie production to behind the camera and becoming producers so you don't necessarily have to go to nyu film you could work your way into the business as a stagehand develop those kinds of relationships with the people who are actually shooting the film and make that transition and people have done it as a matter of fact um you'll find more people who've made it successfully that way than you have with you know degrees out of film schools that's interesting yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. All of it is super fascinating. Um, okay, Carol, we'll start with you with the next question. How difficult is it to find a job in your field when starting out and what steps can be taken to get your foot into the door? Hmm. So honestly, I don't think it's difficult at all to find a job. There are hair salons at every corner, as you can see. So I think that if you go in and you really want a job at a certain salon, I think that, you know, it's very easy to get a job. I don't think there's a problem at all. There's tons of them all over the place. And what was the next question? No, that was perfect. Um, yeah, you answered the second part. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Uh, John, what about you? That's not hard at all. You just have to be willing to start from the bottom and work your way up and work hard. And um, yeah, there's always, there's always going to be something that needs to be fixed. There's always going to be something that needs to be built. Yeah. There's, there's always, there's always going to be a job in construction, in my opinion. And uh, you just have to work hard. And like one of these gentlemen said before, you have to be on time. Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent have to be punctual have to be yeah and, but yeah it's definitely it's, it's not hard if you're willing to work on it great thank and you i think also john like john and everybody actually all your jobs i think probably a lot of word of mouth with your reputation of the work you do you get a lot of you know more jobs like that too probably so it's important for that absolutely absolutely what about you dina how difficult is it to find a job in your field and what step can you be taken to get your foot in the door? So believe it or not, now, like when I first started, they, they, the whole thing was they would say, oh, they're gonna 
not need court reporters anymore because they're going to videotape or they're going to, you know, audio tape They're, you know, the technology is going to take over, but that's not true. And now more than ever, um, there's been a big need for court reporters. Like I said, again, with the closed captioning, but with zoom meetings, I can't tell you how many phone calls I get. Can you transcribe a zoom meeting? Can you transcribe a zoom meeting for us? Cause, and even the court cases, Courts are now with COVID, they're being, they're being um, held and they're being held either via Zoom or they're being tape recorded. So to get in the door, there's internships you can do. Um, the school that you go to helps you a lot. Um, and just knowing the right people, you know, knowing people. I was lucky when I started out, I was lucky my cousin was a court reporter on White Plains Supreme Court. So just getting to know people. And I, I did an internship over there and, you know, just being like, that's how I got my foot in the door was with the internship. And then you go to different, they, like what, what you do, there's agencies that you go to and then they help you get jobs. They'll get jobs for you. Um, and like I said, now the field is just booming. And then there's also like the closed captioning, the agencies help with that. And then they have videographers that you can, you can work along with that you transcribe all their work. So I, I would say the best way to get involved in it is just to call different agencies, to contact the court, courthouses and just to look online. And you'll see there's a ton of jobs in my field. Great, great. Scooter, what about you? Not, well, it, it's about timing. It's generally not that hard. If you're going through the, like say, okay. So if you're going through the apprentice program, it, it's, you, you're going to be busy all the time. Uh, as I had mentioned earlier, if you're getting that reference from your friends and you're not a member, it's going to be harder. Uh, of course, if you are already working in a space that organizes, again, you're already there and you already have work. So part of it depends on the route that you take to get in. But the other thing is really, um, and yeah, I'm going to go with John and Tom, uh, making sure you have a reputation for being punctual, being a hard worker, will open a lot of doors, even in the more difficult circumstances. And because <clears throat> there is a certain amount of timing involved with the apprentice program and, and the testing, it's about learning to be diligent and following up on things. It's like, you know, people will come in and say, okay, uh, I'd like to take the test. And they'll say, okay, well, it's December. We're going to have a test in April. It's being diligent about following through. It's like not just showing up in April, but maybe touching base in March or, or February to see what's going on, what you can do to prepare uh, because there are books and, and things that you can do to get ready in the meantime. So, um, What's it, you know, a couple of things. Um, a, a lot of people miss opportunities because when it knocks on the door, it shows up looking like work. That's that's kind of a, a lot of what it is. It, preparing yourself for that, for that, doing the work to prepare yourself so when those opportunities come, you're able to make the most of them. And that generally opens the door. So it, it's not hard. There are some timing issues and there are some some access issues but again showing up on time working hard preparing yourself takes a lot of those barriers out of out of the way right right yeah we're seeing a theme here tonight definitely um tom last but not least mm -hmm. how difficult is it to find a job in your field well um i agree with um what most people are saying is you got to really want it. You got to want to work hard, and it's not it's not that difficult. Uh, you, and you should um, take as many courses as you can. Take shop if they offer it for you. Uh, take theory classes, and then you could start off anywhere. Anybody, any local guys looking to hire. There's work all over right now. It, you know, starting is not is not where you end. It's just where you're starting, and and you know get you get um get on the job experience, and then you move along, and you just be relentless. You just keep knocking on doors. And I always said, you know, I've never been so lucky as, as when I worked hard, you know, and that's, and that's the case. That's been the case my whole career is just work hard and, uh, you know, just treat people the way you would want to be treated. Really. It's just basic stuff that you learn. 
you know, when you're a kid, just apply it, you know, just be a, try to be a good person, good, honest person and work hard and, 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 and do what you're supposed to do. A day's work for a day's pay, they say. They don't want you to kill yourself. They want you to come in there and do a day's work for a day's pay. Also, a funny thing, I hired a plumber. He came in the door and he says, I get $800 a day. I was shocked. And, and I asked him, no, oh, that's what a plumber makes now. And on Long Island, $800 a day. I was like, wow, I should have been a plumber. But, <laughs> but you know, the, the, the money the money is there if that's what you're interested in. The rewards are great. Uh, and, you know, and just to, and, and, you know, another thing is when you do a job and you turn around and you look back and you say, wow, that, that's beautiful. You know, I, I, I did the World Trade Center. I, 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 you know, I built the World Trade Center. I was part of that. Turn around and say, that's a beautiful job. And that's another very rewarding thing. If you love what you do, like one of the ladies shared, you're not really working. So that's very important too. Thank you. Love all these answers. They're amazing. Thank you for sharing. Um, we're learning so, so much. Um, quickly, because I think we have 14 minutes and we do want to have a chance for our attendees to ask questions. We'll start with Dina. The last question is, what do you enjoy most about your career or find the most rewarding? So I, I mean, I enjoy that. But I do, I freelance. So I go to different jobs, different attorney's offices, different times. So what I enjoy the most is that I get to meet different people. I enjoy not being in the same office day in and day out and being at different places. Um, and what's rewarding about it is that, you know, you, you do, you get on different cases and you see different, you learn a lot. You learn a lot about the legal system, some good, some bad, some, some really good cases that I've been on. Um, when I first started, what the, one of the most exciting ones was I was, I start I was working in the MLB and, um, I was doing arbitrations with the baseball. I, I love baseball. Anybody that knows me, I love baseball, softball. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so they, I was doing the contract deals. I was taking the arbitrations for the baseball players with the contract deals. So it was really exciting. It was it was a lot of fun to sit through those and see how much money they made. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> Absolutely. So. Tom, what would you say is the most rewarding thing about your career? I agree um, with the fact that um, it, it, it's uh, about the people. I love people. I was, I, I was a salesman before, before I was 19 years old, before I even got into this. Um, but I would say working with, I've, I, and I've worked from, worked with, uh, people from all over the five boroughs of every race, nation, uh, you know, I, I worked with so many people and made so many great friends. And um, to me, that was the most rewarding thing. And and like I said, to, to see what you built after it's done, to look back and to go back and visit the places that you built, it, it, it's amazing. And, and it's it's teamwork. It's all teamwork. And, you know, anybody who knows sports that knows it's, it's you know, if you're part of the team and, 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 and you uh and you do your best, good results come from that. So uh, that's pretty much it for me. Absolutely. Carol, what about you? So what I find most rewarding is pretty clear. It's just making people feel good about themselves. They could be having a bad day and they come in and I make them look good. So now they look good and they feel good. And I do too. It's all positive. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, I definitely get that feeling. <laughs> Scooter, what about you? What would you say is the most rewarding? Well, um, I'm really fortunate because I, I do shows. So, you know, people, people, when you're at a concert, it, you, it can be a very electric experience. So when we have a great show and especially if I'm mixing, but even if, if I'm just setting up chairs and stands, being a part of that experience and, and that moment is very rewarding. And, and, and I got to agree with Tom too, the people I work with and the people of both in my union and the people who come in, the clients, the, the artists, the musicians, the actors, whoever it is. Um, I've made a lot of great friends on both sides of, of, of the stage. And um, the people are probably the, 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 uh, the enduring great best thing 
the moment, you know, of, of, of the concert is, is the high. But after the luster and that moment passes, it's really what you did with those people, the, that interaction, the friends that you, you've had um, that really make, make the end of the, make you smile at the end of the day. Yeah, you've probably met some really talented people in your time. Um, yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna ask that. <laughs> the, most, the most famous people I know, Tommy has met a lot of people at the Garden, the musicians and yeah. tennis players, and Scooter's probably met a boatload, and and yeah. Dina doing some of the Major League Baseball, and Carol even you know working with people and being an artistic with hair, and John, I'm sure you've been in some beautiful homes with different people. You don't want to put them on a the spot, but. I know Tommy's always shared with me one of the most exciting parts of his job was getting to see these people really behind the scenes. And, and you know, you see them on TV, you see them in the magazine, and then you're really working with them on, on a nightly basis. It's pretty incredible. So another part of the journey for you guys. So I'm, I'm even getting excited about it, you know? It's, it's, it's very interesting. You're it's, not allowed to change your career, Mr. Tobin. We're not letting you. <laughs> <laughs> Not an option. And John, um, last but not least, what is the most rewarding part of your career? I agree with Tom a thousand percent as far as seeing what you've done, the finished product and how it came out, whether it be something you built from scratch or something you repair. I, I, I love that. And also making customers happy. I like that a lot because a lot of times people have bad experiences with other contractors or builders and they think the same thing's going to happen with everyone. And then when you make them happy, it's just, a, it's a good feeling. Great. Thank you all so much. These were wonderful answers. Very enlightening. Um, I think we're going to open up the chat right now to the students. So if anybody has a question, you can put it in the chat and Mr. Tobin will read it. Yeah, we'll see if we could do that with the webinar at this time and um, see if anything comes in. If not, you can always follow up with me at the school level. We have a number of students on right now this evening with any questions in particular. I don't see any coming up yet, but um, if you do have any that you'd like to um, particularly speak about or ask questions about, I can get you back in contact with some of our presenters tonight and get some more information as well. So with the webinar, I don't believe right now we can see any questions coming up in the chat. At least I don't see any. And chat, oh, chat is open. Okay. So you can answer questions. Go ahead, Chris. Thank you. Chat is now open. Dina, do you know Eric Sanders by any chance? Uh, sounds familiar, actually. Yeah, he works in White Plains. He's a court reporter. The court reporter there? Yeah. Uh, White Plains Supreme Court? I believe you know so. Yes. I believe that's where he is. It's a very small group of us <laughs> yeah i know i know i know he, li he lives in white plains I, I met him when i was campaigning you know when i was doing the campaign for county clerk great guy oh, okay all right so yeah, we've got uh, i see a chat here question uh -oh. from sm sorry to interrupt you guys um nice comment that from actually one of our parents that you guys were awesome so thank you for that comment very very nice thank you thank Any you other questions come thank up thank you and I'm going to monitor this as it comes in, Chris. Thank you. Another question from Jay. What do you think the first step of being a hairdresser is? So that's for Carol, obviously. Go ahead, Carol. Well, the first step is you want to pick what cosmetology school you want to go to. There's, there's a few. Of the, I know there's one in Mount Vernon that I went to. I think there's one in Yorktown. But there, there's a few of them that you can choose from. And so you would start there. You would go to cosmetology school and then you would take your two tests, your state board and your written tests. And then you go out and get a job. And that's that's right. That's it. Thank you, Carol. You're Thank welcome. You. All right. I'll keep checking these questions here. All right. Thank you. And. In the meantime, we do have a number of minutes left. I'm gonna to continue to just look at the chat as we're speaking. Um, I wanna thank everyone. First of all, our PTA, Susan Mealy, our president, I have to tell you our PTA is second to none. Like you guys, I've been doing this for 34 years. I've been in five districts and it's not a district like Tuckahoe with the support for our student body and for our kids on a daily basis. I thank the whole PTA. I thank our committee chairs uh, for this event, Jen and Beth Ann, it's been a pleasure to work with both of you, our panelists. 
I know all you as parents, but now I've got to see you all in another light. I really appreciate each and every one of you. And, um, you know, it, it was it was nice, nice, nice for the students just to get the opportunity to watch and hear from every one of you, each, each one of you on your profession. Um, and that really is going to um, almost close us out. I, I do want to say, though, you know, a few of you have mentioned this. And when you're choosing a career path and there's a saying that, you know, if you have a job, you love, you'll never work another day in your life. Mm-hmm. And Tommy and I growing up were roommates in a house with 10 children. So we <laughs> spent all of our time talking about what we want to do with athletics. And he's a year and a half older than me. So he's always right. But, you know, <laughs> we picked, we picked two paths, you know, and he took coursework in a different way than I did going to undergraduate or graduate school to go into administration. But, you know, it, it's the same amount of work. It, 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 it's hard work. It, it's, you know, you put your time in, but you take careers and you look at them. And um, like I said, a lot, a lot of uh, good times meeting people, working with people and, and just, um, you know, getting into that. Um, Scooter, great to hear from you as well. I've been on committees with you and stuff and hearing your side. John, same with you. And Dina, I know you and see you at a lot of the games and everything. And now to see another part of you, what you do. And Carol, thank you too as well. It's been a real thank pleasure. You. And <laughs> Our Mr. co-host, Thompson, I don't know if you want to finish anything else up, Jennifer, if you we want to say anything. One more que- we have one, more, one question. more question on the chat. It just asked, uh, Sorry. Question to Scooter, what's the first step to becoming a sound engineer? Oh, uh-huh. good question. Thank you, Jen. I didn't see that. Thank you. There are a couple of ways you can go. Um, there are schools like uh, there was one in Manhattan called the Institute of Audio Research. Then that was kind of overshadowed by another one called Full Sail. They tend to specialize in recording, though they have all started to branch out into what we call reinforcement, which is live sound. Uh, so if that's really your thing, uh, that would be a good place to start. If you're a musician, continue that as well, because they're interrelated. And I'm going to say it again, study the math. Music is math. Audio engineering has a lot to do with electricity, which is all math. And it, when you go to Full Sail or any of those schools, you're going to be dealing with a fair amount of that. But yeah, Full Sail, uh, Institute of Audio Research, there are a bunch of others. And if you really want to specialize in reinforcement, you can show up at a sound company. Uh, their C Factor, which is where I used to go out to. They're a lighting company, but they also do sound. You could make a phone calls and, and just ask for work for any of the sound companies because that's how a lot of guys started. When I was getting into the business, that's kind of how you did it. Great. Thank you, Scooter. And I just want to say thank you to everybody because I found this so interesting learning about all your different careers. I, I learned so much. You know, you think you know what all those different jobs are, and I did not know anything compared to all the stuff you taught me tonight. So thank you all for participating. I feel like kids are going to get so much out of this and learn so many new, more options that they might not have known they had. So thank you, guys. I hope so. Yeah. Thank you. Beth Ann, you you want to say anything before we sign off, Beth Ann? No, I would just echo what Jen said. I am fascinated by all of your careers, and I'm thinking about switching ASAP. (laughs) (laughs) And just so you guys know, we will put this on a district web page and leave it up there so our students can follow up. And, and again, if any of the kids have any questions, they can follow up with me and I can get them to talk to you guys on an individual basis. If you don't mind that I have emails and contact numbers as well. So um, on behalf of everyone in the PTA, I'd like to say good night and thank you. And we really appreciate each and every one of you participating with us this evening. And Mr. Keogh, thanks for all your work behind the scenes. You guys have a great night and a great holiday. Be well. Thank you.